Welcome to Fayetteville in Focus, our show highlighting stories from around town. Every two weeks, a new episode will air on Fay TV, the city of Fayetteville's government access channel. Fay TV airs on Channel 7 on Time Warner Cable. It's also streamed online at FayTV.net. And there's plenty more that can be found online by liking the city of Fayetteville on Facebook or following us on YouTube. Starting out our show this week, we'll take a look at some of our recent happenings in our Fable and Five news segment. And our feature story today is a tribute to the men and women women who served in the armed forces and continue to serve their community while working for the city. And wrapping up the show, I'll tell you about some upcoming events honoring veterans in the calendar of events segment. And in the community like Fable, there's plenty of events and ways of saying thank you to our veterans long after Veterans Day has passed. Let's get started with the show. Annual Veterans Day Parade helped to kick off celebrations honoring veterans and thanking them for the service. Thousands of soldiers, veterans, floats, and residents, along with local marching bands and veteran organizations, turned out for the parade. The theme for this year's parade is honoring our greatest generation and honor the veterans from World War II. The parade began on Hay Street at the Airborne and Special Operations Museum before ending at Liberty Point on Person Street. The Fable Fire and Emergency Management Department held its annual Fall Safety Day on November 5th at Cross Creek Mall. Residents helped to celebrate Sparky's birthday with some good old cupcakes. Highlights during the event include demonstrations, a helicopter flying in from UNC Carolina Air Care, Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus stopped by the event after trading in their red sleigh and reindeers for fire engine number 11. And during the Fall Safety Day, residents got to meet with first responders and learn different ways they can stay safe at home and went out around town. Governor Pat McCrory paid Fayetteville a visit just before Halloween to tour the Habitat for Humanity's Buxton Village community. The governor began his visit during Habitat for Humanity's annual breakfast before meeting with residents of Buxton Village and talking with reporters. The governor commended Fayetteville for their preparations before the storm and the community's response in the storm's aftermath. Fayetteville is almost the role model on both how to deal with a flood and also how to recover from a flood. The governor also thanked the first responders, city staff, volunteers, and local organizations for their dedication and hard work during the recovery phase. The City of Fables reopened the public road leading in and out of the Ray Conda subdivision in western Cumberland County two weeks ahead of schedule. Sipple Avenue was closed when the earthen dam passing beneath it was damaged on October 8th by floodwaters caused by Hurricane Matthew. The dam is private, but the city maintains Sipple Avenue. The contracting and work on the road was expedited to ensure that emergency responders, city service crews, and residents could access the Rayconda subdivision. The project cost $750,000. The city and county have ended a state of emergency following Hurricane Matthew, but cleanup and recovery work continues following one of the worst hurricanes that hit the city in over a decade. Debris pickup resulting from Hurricane Matthew continues across the city. The city is contracted with a disaster recovery team from New Jersey. Since they began debris pickup on October 21st, more than 7,481 cubic yards of storm debris has been picked up by the city and the contractor. That's the equivalent of 748 Volkswagen Beetles. Residents are asked to place storm-related debris curbside by December 9th and to keep their various types of storm debris within 10 feet of the road and separate the debris by vegetative, construction demolition debris, appliances, electronics, and household hazardous waste such as cleaning supplies, batteries, and oil. The different types of debris may be picked up on different days and churches and commercial establishments should contract with a private firm for storm debris removal just as they do for routine removal of their garbage. Residents are asked to call 433-1-FAY to have any questions regarding storm debris removal. Remember, if your property was damaged by Hurricane Matthew, there may be permitting requirements as required by local and federal rules. Severely damaged structures that were built before current codes were in effect may have to be repaired and the home made to meet current code standards. This applies to properties in the 100-year floodplain that were damaged at 50% or more of the assessed value of the property. If the homes received less than 50% damage, they can be repaired, providing no additional code violations are created during the repairs. To find out if your property is within the 100-year floodplain, visit the city's website at fablent.gov hurricane. In addition, the City of Fable plans to reallocate around $900,000 in funding provided by federal housing and urban development programs to help repair flood damaged homes that meet HUD requirements. With a maximum $10,000 grant, the City expects to help about 90 homes on a first-come, first-served basis. The Council's vote is the first step in the process to reallocate the budget. There still needs to be a 10-day comment period as well as a November 28th public hearing 
followed by HUD's approval of the plan. If you've driven down Person Street recently, you may have noticed some improvements along the way. Two blocks of Person Street between Cool Spring Street and the Blunch Creek Bridge in downtown Fayetteville were redeveloped during the innovative Stormwater Greenscape project. The goal of the project is to beautify a major downtown corridor by widening sidewalks, making the parking spots more accessible, and adding landscaping and LED lighting. The project is also eco-friendly with features like bio-infiltration bump outs and permeable pavement design. What this means is that 87% of the runoff is designed to flow into the ground and recharge groundwater and in turn help to reduce by 95% the amount of pollutants such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and suspended solids from reaching our local streams. A $309,000 grant from the North Carolina Clean Water Management Trust Fund help fund the project. Fort Bragg is one of the largest military installations in the country, and being our neighbor, we recognize the invaluable service that our military provides, not only to our nation, but to our community. And with thousands of military personnel being stationed at Fort Bragg, it's no surprise that many have made Fayetteville their home, raising their families here and retiring here when their service is done. <laughs> Even after military service, many veterans continue to serve right here in our community through employment, volunteerism, and community service. The City of Fayetteville is proud to have many veterans as employees and recognizes that their military training is an invaluable asset. For what we do, or what I do here with the City of Fayetteville, it gives me the same opportunity I had as a, as a soldier and that is to take care of one, you know, my organization, to look after it, uh, to look after uh, my community, and ultimately I'm looking after the nation. As vets, they have experienced and understand that to accomplish a mission, it takes teamwork. This mindset is beneficial for the city as we work together to provide the best possible services to our citizens. You know, the military instills in you from the first day of basic training teamwork and that carries over throughout every day of your life in the military and it's hard to get away from that once you've separated from the military. You still have a sense of teamwork, of camaraderie, of being able to work together with others for the good of the many and that's what you see here. We're all a team. We're in different branches of the city and, and the community but well, we're a team working to better Fedville as a community and a society. Veterans employed by the city come from diverse backgrounds. They've served in various branches of the military and now work in many different positions throughout the city. The, the freedoms that I fought for in the military, now that I'm here in the Human Relations Department, part of our mission and our vision is the same mission and the vision that the, the Army um, had, and that is to make sure that we secure the rights and freedoms for uh, people of all different races and ethnic groups and to fight for civil rights. One thing that holds strong with our vets is a sense of camaraderie. Uh, one thing that I found after being retired is that although um, this is an army town, when I get together uh, with uh, other retired folks or folks that have uh, served their country, uh, there's still a camaraderie. Uh, it doesn't matter what service you're in. Uh, if uh, someone hears that you served and, uh, or someone hears that you're also retired and they're retired, it doesn't matter what service you're in. There's a camaraderie that we all have together uh, serving our country in the military. Recently, during a brief gathering, city employees shared their insight of what being a veteran means to them. I think just the commitment that you would put your life on the line, day in and day out, for the person to your left, to your right, in front of you and back of you. Uh, it means the sacrifice that I made for my country, um, standing in the gap, you know, for those that weren't able to, you know, um, uh, fulfill, the, fulfill an obligation that was deep in my heart. Um, what it means to me to be a veteran is the opportunity that I had to serve with people from all different nations, races, ethnic groups, um, that I'm a part of a legacy that fought for the freedoms um, and the rights that we now um, have uh, in this country. You know, there's an inscription over at Freedom Memorial Park that I simply love. It's one in particular that says, all gave some and some gave all. And so as we gather here today, we are forever mindful of those that paid the ultimate sacrifice, the 40 plus thousand that didn't come home walking, and that shall always bear a scar on our hearts.
As we approach Veterans Day, we would like to honor our veterans, active duty and retired. Thank you for your service. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Day is November 11th, and as we honor those who have served and are still serving our country, we encourage you to visit the North Carolina Veterans Park located right here in downtown Fayetteville. You'll see unique monuments, water features, and captivating exhibits that honor veterans from every branch of the military. Also be sure to visit the Airborne and Special Operations Museum, which is located adjacent to North Carolina Veterans Park. This state-of-the-art facility houses exhibits, artifact displays, and life-size dioramas that highlight the honor, courage, duty, and heroic feats of Airborne and Special Operations soldiers. Hours of operation for both North Carolina Veterans Park and the Airborne and Special Operations Museum is Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Sundays, noon to 5. Admission is free. A holiday tradition continues as the Arts Council and Downtown Alliance present the 17th annual Dickens Holiday. On Friday, November 25th from 1 to 9 p.m., historic downtown Fayetteville will be transformed into a unique and wonderful experience with horse-drawn carriages, artisans, carolers, and vendors with all sorts of delightful treats. Kids can pose with Father Christmas and Ebenezer Scrooge will be roaming the streets. As darkness approaches and the clock reaches 5 p.m., townspeople gather in front of the Arts Council for the candlelight procession to the market house, followed by fireworks. Dickens Holiday will be a highlight of the holiday season and you don't want to miss it. This free event takes place November 25th, 1 to 9 p.m. in downtown Fayetteville.
To wrap up this episode of Fable in Focus. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you would like to watch this or any other Fay TV programming, visit us on the web at FayTV.net. So remember, like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and keep watching our live stream on our website or on Time Warner Cable Channel 7. Thank you for watching Fay TV.